Hi, my name is Tim. I'm a flooring and stair contractor, and today we're out at one of our projects where we're about to install some smart core vinyl flooring. But before we can install it, we're going to have to correct some really bad problems with the concrete subfloor. It's unlevel, it's out of whack, and today we're going to show you how to correct it. Without any further ado, let's hit it. So we're going to be using an 8 foot long aluminum straight edge, also known as a screed, to do all of our leveling with. I wouldn't even try to do this without one. So I'm going to put the links for this and products similar to this in the description below, so be sure to check them out. If you plan on doing any leveling, this is a necessity. So the first thing that you want to do, or what I'd like to do before I even plan on mixing up any mud or starting, is to plan out where I want to actually pour the mud. And that's what I'm doing here with my straight edge. I'm going to mark where the worst areas are. Um, wherever I see a space under the screed, that's a low spot, and that's exactly where I want to mark the floor so I know where to pour my mud, especially in a large room. I may have forgotten exactly where the worst areas are, so now I've marked them and I know exactly where to concentrate my mud. As we see Sky mixing up the mud here, it's really important to make sure you use the right amount of water. So I always use a ratio bucket so that there is no question. Uh, if you don't use the right amount of water, it's not going to run the way it's supposed to. It's not going to level out nicely and it's going to set up too quick. Uh, I'm using the Maypie Self Leveler Plus. But I'll put some links in the description below of some products that I like to work with. The mud's ready and we're just about ready to get started. Let's listen in on us fixing this uneven concrete floor. So now we want to keep a puddle. We want to keep a, a nice amount of mud along the bar. We want to keep it uh, so that there's no light showing under it so that we have it completely covered and we'll drag the bar. Our focused area here is our line over there. Our other line over here. We want to keep it fat, keep the mud field uh, pretty thick so that we don't run out. And we don't have to stop, we can just keep going forward. Right. Yeah, go ahead and pour it out there. there get it all the way to the wall. Yeah, and it's gonna need the most in the middle. I mean, that's good right there. Start with that, you dumped it all out. Start mixing the next one. We got our flat trial and we're gonna use that to keep it moving. And that's about it. Now we're gonna drag, drag our straight edge. And we always have to make sure that there's no space under that bar. No space for anything but mud. You just want to see mud. You start running out, you got to add some to that area and go back. Yeah, is it nice and loose like this? Yeah, it's a little more loose. All right, let's do it. Pour some more. Having someone constantly mixing mud for me makes a huge difference because if I have to stop and mix mud, chances are the stuff I've already poured out is going to start to set up. And when I combine the two, it's not going to flow as nicely. So plan it out, have two people, and you have to have the flat trowel. Now you notice the trick with the flat trowel. Uh, I keep using that to push the mud up against the bar. Um, if I didn't have that flat trowel and I let space develop under the bar, then I'm not going to be getting the mud where I need it. Also take notice to how I drag the bar through the mud. It's not just across the floor, but it's away from me and towards me as I drag it. Um, that just makes sure that I don't have any excessive mud underneath the bar and I get it nice and tight. Um, so it's a combination, but if you mix your mud loose enough, you can actually backtrack a little bit if you feel like you didn't get it in the right place. Uh, it's, so it really comes down to how you mix your mud. You want it nice and soupy so that it runs and levels out and you can actually go back and fix any areas you weren't happy with. And then you notice here at the end, I go ahead and I take the flat trowel and just smooth out whatever excess mud we have left over. And we don't want to leave any edges. We want it to all be nice and flat bring it down to zero I call it zero it out so that it's smooth and and you really can't tell where it ends into the old concrete floor I'm also gonna put a link in the description to a giant 150 gallon mix bucket that I use a lot of times on these jobs where you have a lot of mud to pour I just couldn't use it on this job because we're up in a condo and I had no place to wash it out and I didn't want to ruin my big mix bucket but I'll put the link to that in the description I think it could be a big help if you have to pour a lot of mud and you have to mix up a lot of mud at one time like we were doing here but as long as you mix your mud right and keep it flowing that straight edge does all the work you really can't go wrong that self leveler 
levels itself out so nice when it's all done that it makes it look like a sheet of glass. Wow, that's all there is to it. I love playing in the mud. I love the results even more, and that's what my clients love because there is nothing worse than laying a floor over unlevel subfloor. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out all of our other videos on leveling subfloors, grinding subfloors. Plus, we even show you how to install floors. But we need your help. YouTube doesn't promote our videos as much as they should, so please like, share, and tell your friends and family. And of course, if you already have it, take out your favorite floor amount and smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content. Thanks for watching.